What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm really really excited because in today's video I'm going to be showing off one of the most hyped decks post Burst of Destiny. Now I'm going to be honest, at first I wasn't super super high on this deck. However, the more I tested it, the more I was like, wait, this deck could be really really good. And I think it is actually really really good. This build that I have has been working so well for me after I've tested like six, seven, eight different builds, six, seven different ways to play the deck. This build has been working super, super well and I'm excited to show it off to you guys. But if you guys do enjoy, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Now, I do wanna say one thing just before we get into the video and that's only like 30% of you guys who are watching my videos are actually subscribed. I saw this stat and I was like, wait, there's no way like 70% of people who are watching are not subscribed. <sighs> Make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's it's literally free and it helps support me. So I would really appreciate that. Check out all my social medias. Links will be in the description below. Also, if you guys have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. Love to hear what you guys think. And with that, let's get into the video. Okay, so to get into the deck profile, we are starting off with Triple Rabina, Triple Eaglin, one Sturge, and one Toucan. Now I'm only playing one Toucan and one Sturge because their effects are really, really good. But the thing is, they do require setup, unlike your Eaglin and unlike your Rabina, where these are really your starters, right? Now, I do want to say this, if you guys don't know how the Fundaries cards work, all of them have an effect that either lets you search, like Rabina and Eaglin let you search, Toucan lets you add back from your banish zone, Sturge lets you banish a card from the graveyard. So Sturge and Toucan are really, really good. Again, these two are searchers. These are how your combo is going to work. You're going to normal summon your Rabina, search your level four or lower, which is Eaglin most of the time. Eaglin is going to get normal summoned because if you guys don't know, all the Fundaries effects have the same effect where after their effect resolves, you can normal summon a winged beast monster. So Rabina effect, search Eaglin, Eaglin to normal summon, Eaglin effect to search level seven or above. So this is where you're searching your big like tribute summonable monsters. Then you can normal summon again, and then you're gonna tribute two usually for either your Empin. If you're going second, you can go with Ryza. And so just to show you guys, these are the big tribute summon monsters that I'm playing. Is I'm playing two Impin, one Ryza the Mega Monarch, as well as one Apex Avion. So that's pretty much how the combo goes with this, and that's just like the most like basic bread and butter combo. And so the thing is though, I want to mention that Apex Avion is just kind of like a personal choice for me. And the reason I say that is because I know some people like to play Snowl, Snowl or Snowl. I can't. I don't know if I'm saying that name right. But point is, some people like to play this. I personally don't because one, it requires three tributes. But the thing is, I think like Apex Avion is just a lot more versatile. You can summon it in a lot more situations. There's times where you can keep looping the Apex Avion, which is what I like about it a lot. So that's why I like the Apex, of course, in here. But if you want to try the Snowl, Snowl, whatever, you can put that in there instead. But it's just really up to you whether you want Apex Avion or Snowl. But I would say Ryza is really, really insane. You definitely want to be playing Ryza. And then you're also playing one barrier statue of the storm winds this one's really really good because when your full combo goes off sometimes you can empin empin on summon searches a spell or trap card from your deck so what you can do is you can search the flunderies trap and then you can normal summon on your opponent's turn and you're going to summon your barrier statue and then when you can summon your barrier statue it becomes really really strong because now your opponent is stuck on an empin but also a barrier statue so it kind of like locks them out of the extra deck pretty much essentially and it's really really strong so i want to say this though so the next card we're showing you guys here is an ecclesia and Big shout out to the Wise Guys TCG. I think it was uh, Pegasus from the Wise Guys TCG. He is the one who actually came first place with a Thunderies deck and he was playing the Dogmatica package, which I had never thought of. I've been testing this deck for so long, never thought of the Dogmatica package. Then I did it and I was like, wait, this is really strong. So I said earlier how all these cards have the same effect where after the effect resolves, you can normal summon a Winged Beast monster. However, Mpin has an effect where after the effect resolves, you can just normal summon one monster. It doesn't have to be a Winged Beast monster. So if you do happen to have the Ecclesia in your hand at this point, right, or if you get it through something like Nadir's, what ends up happening is now after you full combo, you summon your Ecclesia. Ecclesia will search your punishment and then boom, now you set up an M-Pin plus a punishment automatically. So that's why I think it's really, really strong actually to play the Dogmatic package. I never thought this package would synergize really well, but it actually does synergize really, really well with the deck. So then for the hand traps, we're playing triple dimensional shifter. This card is nuts. It's so insane. Like it's so crazy. I'm not gonna lie. You have to be playing this right now, right? Especially in a deck like this where all these cards get banished anyways. So you don't really care if they get banished because shifter just makes your opponent not able to play, right? And then double ash blossom i'm only reason playing double ash blossom to be honest because of the cross out that's like really the only reason i didn't actually want to play ash at all in this deck um i wanted to play more extenders but i kept testing and the more i kept testing the more i'm like wow i'm really losing to one ash even under dimension shifter because ash doesn't need to be sent to the graveyard it just has to be discarded from your hand unlike something like veiler where if you have the dimension shifter up they can't veil your cards anymore because the veiler has to be sent to the graveyard for the effect right whereas ash just have to be discarded so it doesn't matter if this gets banished so i only played this literally just for the cross out that's the only reason i played ash otherwise i actually would not even want to play it at all but of course it's very necessary 
then I'm playing triple Nadir Servant. Now I will say this, there is some like anti-synergy with Nadir Servant as well as Dimension Shifter, but it's fine. There's a lot of times where you open both the D-Shifter and the Nadirs, it doesn't matter. You can hold on to your Nadirs. And the reason I say that is because if you're activating Dimension Shifter, your opponent most likely is not going to be playing. So you can wait out a turn, especially a deck like this. It's not like going super fast trying to OTK. You're really controlling the tempo with this deck, right? So even if you Dimension Shifter your opponent, Hold the Nadirs. You can Nadirs on your next turn. You can you can Nadirs later. Like you know what I'm trying to say. Like, you're not forcing the Nadirs always. Nadirs obviously with the Dogmatic package is just a, such a strong package. But the thing is, like Dimension Shifter is just a strong card on its own. So if you just Dimension Shifter, hold the Nadirs, it's fine. Even though it may seem anti-synergistic, it still works perfectly fine because you're slowing this deck down. Anyways, you're slowing your opponent down, and then you're controlling the tempo, right? The Dogmatic package is just so strong, so that's why I really wanted to play this. Also, if you don't open your Dimension Shifter, because of course Dimension Shifter is a great card, but there's a lot of times you're not going to open it, right? So if you don't open your Dimension Shifter, this gets you through your deck, gets you into your Ecclesia, gets you into your Punishments, and then more interruptions, more interactions on your opponent's turn, right? So that's why, of course, Nadir is very important. Then we're playing Triple Extravagance and Two Duality. I like to play Extravagance over Prosperity, I'll be honest with you. The reason for that is because this deck kind of does struggle with one thing. And the one thing it struggles with is getting these Fundaries cards in your hand. Now you guys can argue like, oh, but Prosperity can get you into six cards and then you can pick one and then most of the time you're going to be guaranteed a Flunderies monster, right? Well, that's true, but you're only adding one card to your hand and your opponent also knows what you're adding to your hand so they can start playing around it. Whereas something like Extravagance is like, I'm just drawing two. I'm just getting two cards into my hand. So it's like a plus one, whereas Prosperity is like a one for one, if that makes sense, right? So even though Prosperity is more of like a guaranteed card to your hand extrav is one of those things where i like to just add more cards to my hand the more cards in your hand the better especially when your opponent doesn't know what those cards are because now they have to think like okay did he draw into like an ash because there's a lot of times you can like draw into an ash you can draw into a call by the grave you can draw into a cross out you know what i mean whereas for example like if you're prosperity and like you you know show your cross out you show an ash and you'll put it into your hand your opponent's like okay well now I know I have to play around in Ash. Now I know I have to play around Cross Out, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm trying to say? So of course, Prosperity is a great, great card. But I think in a deck like this, Extravagance is really, really good. Especially because you don't really use your extra deck that much, literally outside of the punishment. Like you're only using your extra deck to send for punishment or to send for Nadirs. And that, that's it. So that's why I really like the Extravagance here. And then of course, to Double Duality. You don't Special Summon in this deck, so Double Duality, of course. One Called by the Grave, as well as Double Cross Out Designator. Again, I didn't want to play this at all. The only reason I chose to play it was because, again, like you just straight lose to Ash Blossom sometimes. I'm going to actually show you guys a quick clip right now of uh, me testing the deck. And uh, yeah, it's just it, it's just horrible. So you guys can see how like feels bad that is, right? Like I had everything in my hand, but one hand trap is just gonna stop your entire combo, right? So that's why I really like the cross out designator. It's really important. Now, obviously you can play stuff like effect Veiler in your deck as well if you wanted to, so you don't lose to something like effect Veiler. But again, you're a little bit safer from cards like effect Veiler just because you have the dimension shifter. But yeah, Ash Blossom, Imperm, very strong, powerful cards. Cross out obviously stops them, so that's why you definitely want to be playing the cross out. Then you're just playing one of the Flunderies on Unexplored Winds. This card is insanely, insanely good, just being able to tribute your opponent's monsters. Really, really good. Reminds you of the Monarch days, right? Like, this card is really, really insane. But again, it's searchable, so you just want to play the one of. Three map. Now, I'm not playing Terraforming. The reason for that is, okay, so this card is insane. One, this card gets you cards that you don't have in your hand that you might need for your combos. Two, it gets you a free normal summon. So this card, in theory and in a box, is insane, right? The problem with this card is there are times, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, because you're only running, what, eight Flunderies level one monsters, there's times where you don't have a level one monster in your hand. So if you have this with no Flunderies monster in your hand, you're really just not playing with this card, if that makes sense, right? So that's why I really like this card. Obviously, the card is insane. I'm not playing the terraforming for it, though. One, because terraforming puts you in a situation where you just lose to Droll. 
If I go terraforming, search the map, and then they go droll, then I can't get my Rabina effect. I can't get my Eaglin effect off. It's kind of a little bit different where at least if you go Rabina, search like an Eaglin, or you go Eaglin, search like a level seven or higher, and then they droll you, it's like, okay, but I already got my search off. And if possible, I'll just get my tribute summon off there, right? Or you could set a bunch of traps. Whereas with this, it's like you search your map, and then if they droll you, you're just kind of like, oh, okay, what do I do now, right? So that's why I didn't want to play terraforming. This card is also searchable off of the Impin, so if you need to, you can search it off Impin as well. Then for our traps, we're just playing triple Imperm. Again, Imperm is just a great card overall, so obviously you're playing Imperm. But on top of that, it's also a cross-out card. We also are playing double Punishment as well as one Plunderies and the Dreaming Town. So I'm going to say this about this card. This card is really, really insane. And at first, in most of my builds, I was actually playing two or three of this because in theory, it's so crazy. If you guys don't know, during the main phase, immediately after this effect resolves, you normally summon a level four or lower winged beast monster. So this is a lot of the time how you can summon your like barrier statue on your opponent's turn, which is really, really powerful, really, really strong, of course, right? But the thing is, I noticed that this card requires you to have a normal summonable winged beast monster in your hand for this to go off. And there were times where I straight up like had this normal summon rabina rabina search eaglin normal summon eaglin search blah blah blah, whatever whatever and i got nibiru on my opponent's turn so like the card is insane i'm just saying that's just a funny situation doesn't really happen too often but it was just kind of a funny thing but uh this card is insane of course but again searchable off and pin you don't need it in like the mid to late game it's not that great it's really good early game but uh yeah th this card is really really good don't get me wrong don't think that i'm just playing one of this and then people are like oh you think that card's bad it's a really good card no it's a really good card but it's just one of those things where once you set up your combo first turn anyways like, what are you doing more with this card? That makes sense. You know, I feel like it's just overkill. So this card is great, but you, you don't need it. I think it's a really good one up. Then for the extra deck, we're just playing the standard, like, Dogmatica extra deck stuff. So you're playing double Titanic Lad. We're playing triple Enthys, of course. One five-headed dragon. Now, you guys might be wondering why the five-headed. Sometimes your opponent puts big monsters on the board, and you just don't have a, a monster in your extra deck otherwise that outs it. So I just like to play five-headed dragon. 5k attack, so if you need the punishment and you, like random 3500 or 4000 attack monster boom you have five headed dragon then you got one omega omega is really really good in this deck by the way because sometimes okay let me let me say this situation there are times where you can loop your dimension shifter getting your dimension shifter out of the graveyard because after you use the first one most of the time it's kind of dead but when you have stuff like omega when you have stuff like sturge to get cards out of the graveyard and get them banished or in omega's case you put them back it's kind of like okay now you can D shifter again so omega is really really good really really important then we're playing double wing Pe pegasus uh this card's obviously really really just good in the graveyard we're playing triple omen as well as triple farajit farajit is really really good because it fixes your hands so that's why i really like the farajit omen is really good because in the actual mid to late game what it ends up doing is it ends up searching you your level one plunderies monsters because most of the time you'll have like one banished or two banished whatever it is what happens is sometimes you'll look at your hand and be like okay i just need one normal summoner i just need one this to continue because all of them add themselves back from the banished pile anyways so sometimes just being able to send the shureg off of like the nadir servant is really really good because it searches you that last piece that you need to help you finish off the game so that's really it for the deck profile it is 15 obviously in the extra deck 40 cards in the main deck I think this deck has been working really, really well, especially since I added the Dogmatica package. I won't lie. I was like kind of getting tilted off this deck because the more I tested it, the more I'm like, oh man, I'm losing to really random stupid things. But then yeah, again, shout out to the Wise Guys CCG um, for, for giving me the idea for the Dogmatica package. I think it's such a good package. And I think you definitely should try it out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you guys have any suggestions, any opinions, let me know in the comment section down below. Again, that's how we get better as a community once we throw around ideas. And, you know, that's how people put things together, essentially. And that's how we get better. So, yeah, if you guys do have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. But I feel like this deck has been working super, super well for me. And I'm really, really liking how it's playing out. Thank you guys all for watching. Again, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. And with that, stay close and sign it out. Peace.